Hey guys, really excited to bring you a little update on some things with Plan Mecca. We have a ton of new CE opportunities. One of them with Are You Numb Yet uh, is rolling out a ton of courses in 2019. Everything from surgical guides, hybrids, to anterior aesthetic courses and conservative ceramic restorations. If you don't know, I've kind of teamed up with Donnie Murray. Uh, Donnie is a genius. Um, he is one of the most talented guys I know, and he's changing the way CE is being taught. We've also brought in Dr. Manito, close buddy of mine. Um, this guy is incredible with anterior aesthetics and conservative ceramics, Dr. Evans, world-renowned periodontist and uh, one of the most talented surgeons that I know. So lots of courses to come in uh, this group with Are You Numb Yet? What's cool is there's also a bunch of other kind of CE groups starting up that are really, really awesome. One of them is with my good friend uh, Shay Tolbert. Shay is a rock star out of Greenville, South Carolina. Um, he is a Emerald Plymeca guru. He is doing some amazing courses in this spring, so keep an eye out for that. And we have uh, Ed and Heather who run the Fifth Gear, which is probably one of the best courses going on, so check them out. They do amazing things with conservative ceramics. And then, of course, there's the traditional Plymeca Digital Academy out of Texas and also in Chicago offering tons of courses. It's just it's really cool that we've transitioned now from, you know, a smaller group to a larger group that has a lot of educational offerings. My philosophy is I want to give you guys as much as I can for free. So online modules, tutorials, videos, lectures, you know, you guys know I try to do that for you. But, you know, there might become a time where you just want to get some more in-depth hands-on. And so for those, we're trying to create some courses if you want to if you want to attend and come hang out and have fun and you know as you know I, I use almost every digital system on the market and, and you guys know I love 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 the emerald and so we've been really trying to improve scanning with it one thing is the scan pattern I've harped on this before I've done a lot of research on this and you know I'm not just you know making up a scan pattern I've looked at accuracy of full arches with all the different scanners and and how the emerald compares and uh, we've fine-tune this scan pattern that makes it such and such an accurate scanner for full arches. We'll get into that a little later. But this update, you notice one thing right off the bat that is clear, uh, very clear imaging. Also, you see the square now, that green square. It's, it's an open window, whereas before it was filled in with a color, so you couldn't really see where you were filling in because it had uh, just a kind of a color mask to let you know how far you are away from the, the surface, but now the window is color coded, so it's green right now. I think it remains green for most of the scan, and that's cool because it's giving you that visual feedback. But also notice as well, we have the acoustic feedback. Scan scanning is just fast and smooth, and the quality of the margins are incredible. <clears throat> when we talk about the new HD, we'll look at the uh, margin clarity in a minute. But yeah. So soft tissue tracking is, is doable. Now, a lot of people are talking about, I want to scan edentulous arches and do dentures and stuff. That's just kind of, uh, in a little bit away, moronic, because you can't really do border molding and you can't get those tissue borders the way that you want. So no scanner really does soft tissue that well, but you know, people, it's kind of like the rodeo out there and people want to show what's possible. But I mean, you could spend 30 minutes making a edentulous scan and have something that's pretty crappy, or you can take a you know, a, a border molded impression. All right, so now let's just keep moving because there's a lot of features. First, you'll notice the mo margin, the models are really crisp, super clear, super crisp uh, models. I really like the renderings that we're getting out of, out of this update and the, just the smoothness of the scanning. Remember before we had that green window that you couldn't really see where you were scanning, so now it's all clear. Accuracy is incredible. So. This is a human maxilla that we dissected out and did three crown preparations with different margin heights, subgingival, equigingival. We, we did scans with all the systems and the emerald was hanging out about 50 microns full arch scans, 39 for preps, cross arch prep accuracy, which is quite remarkable guys. Palette is sitting at 150. Once again, most of the scanners were all 150 or above. On the emerald, mash the top and bottom button at the same time and it becomes like a, a virtual 
mouse and you could just rotate your wrist and not have to touch anything. No computer touching, completely sterile, hands-free, controlling now. Also the slimline tip. This thing is, guys, this thing is tiny. It's about the size of your finger. Um, it's almost six millimeters smaller than the Trios tip. It's incredible. We also have HD margins with the HD photo overlay. This I think is perhaps one of the biggest things to to help with everyday workflows. You can see how crisp the margins are. Also, it seems to be a lot more stable. So here I am designing, you know, this this massive eight unit case and I'm, I'm copying a pre-op wax up and I'm using not even a release version of this, of this next update. And it's been completely smooth. You notice everything is no crashes, no bugs. Um, they're doing a lot of work. That's part of the reason for the delays. I mean, they want to make sure it's as smooth as they could get it. And of course, once things get released, there's always new things that pop up. But I really try to push it to its limits and test it um, and, and try to stall out the software. But you can see how smooth everything's running and the models look crisp and the designs are just butter cakes. I love, love this software anyway. I mean, I have ExoCAD. I have 3 Shape. Uh, lab software and I still go back to this as the kind of just easy fast fun you know I could do this whole smile on plan CAD easy before I could even start ExoCAD so <clears throat> you know there's something to be said for simplicity and, and uh, it's kind of what originally drew me to this this system was you know the simplicity of the design software and the the remarkable ability to clone temporaries and wax ups to the micron level. And I think that's where, where it's at. But, <clears throat> you know, as we go on, we'll, we'll, we'll keep pushing the limits of this software, but I love it. Updates amazing. And the results that we get, of course, as you know, fits are just incredible out of the system. You won't see margins, ultra thin veneers with half millimeter feathers are just milling butter butter crisp smooth no chips and it's just you know I'm loving it but let's keep going because there's tons tons more my favorite thing by far is this HD photo snapshot this prep is eight miles sub gingival you just hover over the prep and stay still and it makes that photo and it and you have the option to connect it to the ply file so labs could get that as well and it looks good in ExoCAD, it looks good in other third-party lab softwares that let you do ply import. And that margin is just buried. And now, you know, one of the most remarkable things that's, you know, coming is, once again, remember, this is exportable. So not only are you taking this HD photo and it's making your margins better, it's also making 2D photos, putting it right into Romexis so that you can literally go back and recall these photos for insurance purposes and and anything like that lab you could send photos to the lab if you need to um but yeah like i said and you could set the sensitivity so you just hover over the preparation and let it snap a photo <clears throat> you don't have to if you don't want to but i think it helps the margin clarity on the cases and you'll see the rendering is going to be much more crisp. It's almost like the old ice view from the black and white. If you look, um, you see how the margins just pop. And of course, color subjective. So you could alternate and rotate the hue and the, the value to make the margins as clear as you want. And I think that's my sweet spot right there. Really cool stuff. But there's a lot of other options when it comes to scanning. On the left, you have the HD snapshot you have motion sensitivity so if you hold your hand how still do you have to hold it before it takes a picture and how how long do you have to hold it still to take a picture so you can make it take pictures really fast or have to be really sensitive to take pictures and then finally there's dash update for everybody so you know plan scan users can get the high speed scanning which basically doubles the scan speed and then there's the delete load data density areas where you instead of making a bleb or a bubble or filling it in, it will actually just put a hole there. And model resolution, I haven't played with this too much. I usually keep it on zero, um, the lowest, but I think it might make things more crisp. 
I honestly don't have a problem with the way they are now, so I don't mess with that. Here's what I'm talking about with the data delete. You could just have holes or have the fill in. My favorite feature is the mirror image. I think nothing has come along in the, over the years that's given us more control than this mirror image ability where you can basically take the contralateral unprepared tooth and create a perfect mirror image of it onto the preparation. And I've tested this feature. I've done hundreds, hundreds with this mirror image and it works. Um, when you're mirror imaging a contralateral tooth, it just works so butter smooth. I love it. And so I'll show you some of these mirror image cases. <clears throat> I think you're going to really like it once, once you get once you get it. So the way that it works is you, you mark your margin, and once again, that's another HD snapshot margin. They just glow in the dark. Really put a lot of work into they they really try to improve this for, for everybody. So look, you just take the contralateral tooth, circle it, make sure contralateral is checked, go to the plan tab, and now you have a shell, a skin of the contralateral tooth that you can manipulate. And you could even tweak it, so it's it's you know not just uh, a contralateral, but it's a completely editable contralateral where you know I underprepared the facial in this instance, but it gets you so close to where you need to be so fast, faster than anything else that I've ever used. And for anteriors, it's you know definitely a game changer. I mean. For me to freehand design that with a with a generic tooth would take forever. I'm pretty much done. Single units traditionally take forever to design because you're trying to look for those symmetries and those mirror image points where you can build in that, you know, that look where it looks like it was just perfect for that patient. And of course. 2D smile overlay to make sure that you have the measurements correct. But I'm telling you guys, there is nothing better than that mirror feature. And of course, milling in you know detail and, and tiny little margins and the fits that you get are just I, I think nothing could beat it. And I don't have to tell you guys that if if you're a you sit user of the system, you know and the ability to have control over what you do for the patient, the, the ability to train and, and help staff and team members to produce restorations that are something they could be proud of for the patient. It's just really cool to see and the artistic side of, of what we do is it's kind of makes it more fun than just snapping an impression and send it to the lab and hoping that it gets it right. You know what we're able to do chair side with the mirror image feature now is to tr create um, truly lifelike aesthetics of course paired with Emacs there's just nothing quite better on the market than than good old Emacs all right let's keep moving on and I want to show you guys a few more of these mirror image cases because um, you know we, we could look and, and talk but the best thing is actually seeing it Here's another, this is another deep margin here. I don't even know where that one, that one's in outer space down there. But look at this. So I'm choosing to, to do a contralateral mirror versus picking this, the tooth I was working because I didn't love it. I actually prefer this clone over cloning the tooth you're working on because it, it actually is, is better because it gives you the interproximal and because you have the interproximal surface after you've prepared the tooth traditionally. But I, I find that, look at, how, look at how close we are already. It was literally three seconds and we're essentially done. All I have to do is look at occlusion. And I always like to slice plane occlusion. And you, you remember, you know, it, it helps me. You could also do drop or minus. You could also go to the occlusal adjustment tab. There's just so many ways to do things in the software. But if you remember from my videos, I like to do the slice plane. All right. There it is. Mirror image. So easy to do, guys. I just love it.
You can't even come close to that on a Serac. Proximal contacts are that beautiful kind of oasis green. Material thickness, just an instant look at the whole surface by a click of a button. And here we go, sprue position. And there it is, try it in. And there we are, fired in the oven. Definitely a high translucency block here, guys. You gotta know when to pick HD, LT, and MT. Another mirror image. I'm telling you, I've done a couple hundred of these. They're just too fun to do. Look at, look at the autogenesis. We're essentially done. I just have to smooth out some ripples and get that occlusion dialed in. The amount of time that you're going to save, you're not going to want to send your anteriors to the lab. I mean, I believe in laboratories. I think they're super important for larger cases and, and collaborative care for patients. But these single units are just a slam dunk. You guys need to be doing them. And there, we're essentially done. Oasis green, proximal contacts. That's it. You don't have to touch these. They just slide right in. Let's see what it looks like on this guy. I think it's utter and complete hotness. Look at the surface texture, how it's a perfect mirror image of that adjacent tooth. I mean, you're not gonna get closer to that from anything. Also, Remexis is updating with retention pins. So now the surgical guide module has full support for various different retention pins for dentalist guides, has a virtual dental pour, and of course it has plant element exports where you could you know, export implant location, implant extension tubes, um, any designed abutments that you have in the guide software. What that means is you could throw like dentures into like mesh mixer and start doing pre-surgical hybrids and cutting holes in your plan and have everything ready to go, surgical guide and prosthetic on the day of surgery. So you don't even have to convert a denture. This is the type of stuff that I like to get hands on with uh, one of our <clears throat> courses that we teach. And hopefully, hopefully as uh, time goes on, you guys will start doing this and posting cases and helping everybody out and teaching others how to do it. But thanks to Christian Brennis, we have these, you know, Brennis tooth libraries here. Now I'm just festooning this, what was a denture that I took a CBCT scan of on the Promax mid. I have now converted into a hybrid. And what I have also am now going to do is cut holes in it exactly where the implants would be coming out based off of the surgical guide that I planned. And so now you could imagine that on the day of surgery, you snap the guide in, put your retention pins in, and then basically seat this down and pick it up on the temp titanium cylinders. And it takes a total of 10 minutes versus hiring a lab tech or somebody to come in to convert the denture and two hours of nightmare mess for absolutely what would be about 10 minutes of work here. So that's because we're open and Plan Mecca could do anything. It could export and import pretty much anything that you want to do. So this is just cool stuff, guys. You know, the export feature you're going to love and the retention pins you're going to really, really, really get some use out of that for the larger edentulous cases. But it doesn't have to be big cases. You know, the export feature could help you make pre-surgical provisionals for just single units. And, you know, take this case here, this, you know, missing number eight. These cases are slam dunk. So once again, this is sped up, but you're going to scan the full arch. This is the pattern that we recommend that I've done a lot of research to show is incredibly accurate. It's kind of essentially five overlapping scans starting on kind of occlusal lingual area, ending on the facial. But we're going to, of course, mirror image the contralateral tooth here. And look at this design, watch this. We are pretty much done. That was like two seconds. 
proximal contacts, that Hawaii kind of oasis green look. I mean, I don't think there's anything more fun than designing on this software. For, for me, it's just crazy. Occlusion, I'm gonna keep it out of occlusion because I'm gonna go ahead and make a temp on this one. Pre-surgical provisional, so check this out. This is, <clears throat> I'm making a little CEJ because it helps me when I'm planning my implant know exactly where I want the facial CEJ. Also, I want that tissue to come down a little bit. So I'm gonna under contour that facial. But here we go, I'm gonna fit that model, that intraoral scan that I just made. I'm just gonna tap a couple common data points. And this is where the algorithms get sophisticated with Planmeca. It's going to automatically align these based off of millions of data points using proprietary algorithms that they've developed. And, and the, the alignments are just incredible. I'm also gonna bring in that wax up that I just did in PlanCAD Easy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slap an implant in there. You know, they actually have like 150 different implants that you could pick from. I like to segment out the contralateral root, and that's just through using the root segmentation feature. You just kind of paint the adjacent root. And because it's an open system, you could export that root as an STL file. And I'm gonna show you why that's important in a minute. This is stuff that like no other system could really do. I mean, you spend like 30 minutes segment out a root on any other software where it does it in about three seconds using the root segmentation feature on Romexis. This is kind of, it's genius. Because what we're gonna be able to do with that root is actually create the emergence profile of the, of the provisional for that tissue healing. So now I'm gonna throw an implant in there. If you want, this is Strawman. I think I might've switched it to an Astra. It doesn't matter. There's literally like 100 implants that it supports. If you do do a strum and it's automatic, the sleeve height is automatically positioned and it coincides with the surgical guide kit. And you could just pick the sleeve height based on the predetermined um, heights of the guide kit. So you could do, you know, the strum and T-sleeve height one, two, or three. And here we have the implant, the wax up, everything, measuring my depth, doing implant centric view. This is really intuitive software, guys. Um, I think it's the best. Um, I am a little bit biased because I tend, I have access to pretty much every implant planning software, but I tend to just use Romexis. So now I'm rotating my sleeve to get it to fit in the edentulous space. There we go. And picking a height. Now, if you know the dimensions of your kit, you don't have to have the predetermined heights. You could figure it all out yourself. Um, but most of the, a lot of the systems like BioHorizons are, are all pre-programmed into Romexis, so that you don't have to do that math. Here is the surgical guide module, just circling that edentulous area. I don't mess with the parameters. Some of you dudes mess with parameters. I don't have any issues. I just pick my form labs too. That's another thing that's a new update. They're gonna have different printers in there. And then you go. And if you don't have your printer in there, don't worry, because I print on like 20 different printers and it works fine. So I usually don't mess with a lot of those parameters and things. Now you can create your own custom implant sleeve housing. If you don't have the sleeve that you need in the library, there's like a million sleeves, but if you don't have it, you can make your own sleeve housing and put any third party sleeve in there. I think that's getting a little bit crazy, but you, you could do it if you want. I like to pick the sleeves that are included in the software just because I don't have time to do measurements and find out what, I mean, it does it automatically. The sleeve tube is rendered perfectly so that when I order this, in this instance, this, this would be a Strawman T-sleeve or it just drops right in. And you could, of course, brand it. Now, I think I'm gonna switch from the Strawman to the Astra here real quick. Um, by the way, you can bring your guide and everything back in and make measurements. It's super intuitive. Software's insane. But so 
it's going to generate a report to tell you, you know, the implant size, the sleeve, the total drill length, everything that you need. Thumbtack that up on your wall. Now, if you know your company's temp titanium cylinder diameter and size, you could custom make that. So I, I think I'm going to switch here to an Astra now. And I'm replicating that temp cylinder exactly so the offset from the distance from the implant the collar the length identically and so why this is important is because we're going to be able to export this you could you can make any abutment shape you really want multi-units you could replicate and you could export the Everything that you have merged, so the abutment, the extension tube, the implant location, the guide, the wax up, the root of the adjacent tooth, and you could do some really cool stuff with that in Mesh Mixer. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I usually teach at my courses if you want to get into this. But essentially, in a couple clicks of a button, I'm able to take that mirror image wax up that I did in Plant Cat Easy, merge it with the mirror image root that I virtually extracted on the Romexis software using their tooth segmentation feature, combine them into um, one unit. So here's the mirror um, right here of that root. And because I mirror imaged the crown as well, I could merge these two now very simply. And combine them and sculpt it, I have the abutment, which is an exact replica of the temporary abutment from the manufacturer. And, you know, you could remove the timing or you could buy a non-timed temp abutment or you could pick it up the day of surgery, which I recommend picking it up the day of surgery. I'll tell you in case any little errors occurred. But see, <clears throat> I'm removing essentially anything that was sticking out of the wax, the virtual wax up. And now I have this perfect root and tooth, which would have been a perfect replica of that patient's tooth if she had had it. I'm gonna go ahead and bulk that out a little bit to make up for the location of the implant. And then I'm gonna essentially just section that right at the margin of the temporary abutment. And course there's some tricks and tips so that you could see what you're doing when you do that but what's remarkable is how well the tissue heals around these things now I'm just melting it back right to that margin this could be a final restoration to be honest with you guys they've been dropping right in um, I perfected it at first I was having some issues but now it's just drop right in So, like I said, if you knew what your tie base looked like, you could have entered that in. Now I'm doing a Boolean difference, importing it. You could 3D print it, um, or you could mill it. This is the 30S mill, another new product that Plymeca is launching. We've been testing the heck out of it, trying to break it. It's a good mill, guys. It's insane. It's going to be nearly half the cost of a traditional mill. Anyway, so you put your surgical guide on, put your implant in, this is Dr. Evans here. Screw that temp in, all set. Let the tissue heal, it's gonna drop down around there. It's great. Of course, Plymeca is also announcing a 3D printer. So in addition to the new software and the new mill, they're working on a kind of top secret printer called the Creo C5. For well under 10 grand, you can have a printer that prints just as fast as a $40,000 a year printer like the Carbon. These hybrids printed in 10 minutes. Um, that's insane, guys. That's a 100 micron resolution. The, the printer is going to be a game changer. Um, nobody's going to come close to this. This whole tray printed in 10 minutes. 10 minutes and 58 seconds to be exact. Insanity. 
Also, so we have the pink mill, the, the 30S mill for roughly half the cost of traditional mill, about a 22 minute on average mill time. The mill is insane. Um, it's got the same direct drive linear force motors that the 40S have that are basically industrial grade found on mills that cost um, five times as much in industry. And it's, it's able to do kind of unique things. It's that top burr holder could, the block holder could spin around, but look how smooth that is. There's like, this is crazy, crazy smooth. And you can mill like Yodas and stuff like that. Open mill, so you can mill anything, like the true abutment workflow, import what they have, mill it. Export your designs, um, truly an open system. So these are just a few of the things, if you guys only knew though, what like was coming down the road, you would, I don't know what you would do. You would definitely go insane. It's in, it's incredible to watch the innovations occurring. So unlike some people who think that Plymeca is not innovating, they just don't know what's going on. So they definitely are innovating in a big way.